All right, um, I had a really uh, fun time ranking the X-Men movies. Uh, I might make this a regular thing, actually, and that's where this came from. Um, I was wondering what I should do next, whether I should do a film series or a game series or something like that, and um, I decided to just jump right in at the deep end, and I'm going to talk about my favourite movies of all time. I didn't think a top ten would do enough to really show you my uh, taste in movies. So I'm going with a top 20, uh, two parts are here. Um, yeah, like, uh, I've got a top 100 list on my phone, but I didn't want to bloat it too much either. So top 20, nice perfect, nice round number to do. Um, before we started, I'm going to throw out a few honourable mentions. Um, movies that I just adore, but just didn't quite make it into my uh, top 20. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, American Psycho, Die Hard, Nightmare Before Christmas, Sweeney Todd, The Road to El Dorado, uh, Lord of the Rings Turn the King, Blazing Saddles, Seven and Alien. Uh, they're the honourable mentions, they're the ones that didn't quite make the top 20. Um, but I'm just going to jump right in, because uh, I'm really excited to talk about a lot of these movies. So, uh, number 20 is uh, The Crow. Um, this is um, a very tragic movie, both in its content and of the story about um, what happened with Brandon Lee. For those of you who don't know, um, there was an accident on set where a prop was mishandled and uh, Brandon Lee was shot through the spine accidentally and uh, he died uh, not long after. Uh, it's absolutely horrible. Um, one of the most infamous on set accidents and um, Without wanting to sound insensitive, um, it actually kind of adds to the movie. Obviously Brandon's death was a tragedy, and this was the movie that was going to like, put a rocket on his back and really make a great career out of him. Um, but the fact that it's a story about a man who um, died too soon and was brought back, um, there's just something otherworldly about it, and Brandon Lee's performance in this movie is incredible. Um, I would recommend reading the book as well. It's a very, very tough read, but uh, very captivating as well. I think this took that and turned it into a more digestible uh, movie. You know, um, the comic isn't very action orientated. It's very emotional. It's very... Uh, <sighs> About the subtleties, you know, it's not it's not an action movie, and the Crow for Intense Purposes is an action movie, and a very good one at that. Um, it's got a fantastic soundtrack, great uh, moody gothic atmosphere, which I love. Um, a great central performance from Brandon Lee. Uh, it's just an all out fantastic movie. Uh, one of the best uh, comic book movies ever made, in my opinion. Uh, just check it out. Honestly, it's. It, it's a such a good a good movie. Uh, definitely deserves a lot of love. Uh, take, 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 honestly, take all of these recommendations. I'm not going to recommend watching them because all of these are recommendations. These are my absolute favourites of all time. Uh, but yeah, The Crow. Brilliant. Uh, number 19. Uh, Evil Dead 2. Uh, Dead by Dawn. Uh, I love all of the Evil Dead movies. I think they're all fantastic. For different reasons, really. The first Evil Dead was... Uh, it's a plucky little independent movie that could. Um, it's, very, it's so charming, and it's still a really effective horror movie in its own right. Uh, Army of Darkness is probably the most iconic entry in the series, in terms of, like, this is where the one everyone quotes. This is the one that uh, people remember Ash and most for, that image of Ash. Uh, and uh, the Evil Dead remake I thought was really good as well. I thought it was a really effective uh, remake. Great use of practical effects. Uh, probably looks up a little bit too seriously, but otherwise, brilliant movie. I haven't seen Ash vs. Evil Dead yet, but I have heard good things about it. Uh, Evil Dead 2 was kind of the middle ground between the uh, horror of Evil Dead 1 and the more cartoony comedy of uh, Army of Darkness, and it managed to balance them both really well. It was still an effective horror movie, but it was also a brilliant comedy. Um, Ash is the perfect anti-hero. He's such a uh, almost hapless character 
he's the he's the he's the every man stuck in a hopeless situation uh as the world goes mad around him and he starts singing into madness as well um there are so many stand up moments in this movie um it is just one of those movies that I delight in watching every time. I could watch this movie a hundred times over. Uh, it's really funny. It's scary when it needs to be. Uh, the effects are fantastic. And of course, uh, Bruce Campbell is just absolutely iconic as Ash. Uh, it, it is the thing most people will remember Bruce Campbell for, other than the fact that he is Bruce Campbell. But... Um, yeah, um, it's one of the greatest performances. One of the greatest character performances, I mean. Like, it's not going to win any awards, but Bruce Campbell just perfectly embodies Ashley Williams, and he is one of the most entertaining characters in all of fiction. And uh, that, for me, is why I keep coming back to Evil Dead. Um, you can take everything out, out, uh, else out about it, but Ash is the thing that holds everything together for me. He's one of my favourite characters in anything ever. Um, so yeah, fantastic movie. Uh, 18. Um, the first of two movies in my top 20 from my favourite director, and that is John Carpenter. And uh, coming in number 18 on my list is Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, it's, it's almost, almost like a parody of uh, martial arts movies. Um, John Carpenter's movies always came across as such great send-ups to genres, while still embodying that genre. Example, In the Mouth of Madness is probably the best uh, Lovecraft movie we're ever going to get, I think. Um, because it's, it, it nails the tropes, and it does so in such a loving way while carving its own identity. And... Big Trouble in Little China did that as well with uh, martial arts movies and uh, the comedy and the action in it is just brilliant as well. Um, again, Kurt Russell is just a brilliant character actor. Um, he's got so many iconic characters under his belt. You know, uh, RJ McCready, uh, Ego in Guardians of the Galaxy, you've got uh, uh, Wyatt Earp in Tombstone, and of course, Jack Burton in Big Trouble in Little China. Probably my favourite character from Kurt Russell, to be fair. Um, such a uh, dry wit, uh, hapless idiot in uh, who thinks he's the you know the dog's bollocks. Such a brilliant character to watch, and all the other characters are so entertaining as well. Uh, Egg Shen, love him. Lo Pan is such a brilliant villain, and uh, uh, Wang is. Uh, uh, such a plucky hero, you know, he, he he's really the main character in the movie, but uh, Jack Burton just steals the spotlight But every, every scene he's in. Uh, it's got great action as well. I love the world it creates. Uh, it's, yeah, it's one of those movies that I can just describe as recklessly entertaining. Uh, there's not a dull moment in this movie at all. It is constantly, uh, constantly uh, exciting and funny and... Uh, all out entertaining. Um, I know I'm gushing a lot about these movies, but I just Big Trouble in Little China is such a good one. I've watched this movie so many times already, and I'm gonna watch it so many more. Uh, it is, it's once a product of its time, but it's also kind of timeless in its own way as well. Uh, that, that, that's the thing about John Carpenter's movies as well. The fact that they were products of their time, but still, still time. Like Escape from New York, you know, you wouldn't get. That movie was meant to be set in the year 1999 or something, you know. Uh, it's so dated in its presentation of the future, but it's still so charming to watch, you know. Uh, I love stuff like that. And that's probably why John Carpenter's my favourite director. His movies are so distinctive. Uh, so obviously John Carpenter. And uh, he just, he any genre he touched, he turned to gold. And Big Show in Little China, again, it did that for me. Uh, 17, uh, Blade Runner. Uh, there are several different movies in this movie. I would highly recommend watching either the director's cuts or the final cuts, uh, in particular. Uh, this is a movie I watched, uh, when I was doing media studies in high school. And, uh, we were studying postmodernism in movies. And, uh, we watched Blade Runner for that. And I remember me and my friend, one of my friends, uh, were the only people in the class who liked it. Everybody else hated it. We we loved it, and it's stuck with me ever since. Um, 
the whole uh, idea of, you know, can robots feel human emotion? Where does the line blur between machine and uh, human, you know? Um, it's a trope that's well played out by now, uh, but do Andrew's Dream of Electric, Electric Sheep has always been one of the, the seminal works of the genre, and Blade Runner was such a great adaptation, and it changed just enough from the book to make it stand out on its own. Um, House and Ford again, absolutely iconic as Deckard. Uh, the design of it is so uh, spellbinding, you know, it creates such a vivid uh, picture of uh, this future. Again, it's set in the year 2019, so, um, you know, it's another one of those dated looks at the future, but um, it's such a captivating world. Um, all the characters are so well realised as well. The, the, the uh, group of androids, especially Roy Batty, one of, again, one of my favourite characters, his uh, final speech is uh, just one of the greatest pieces of cinema you'll ever, ever see. Um, Ridley Scott really outdid himself with Blade Runner, and I don't think he's ever talked to himself. Uh, again, he's still made loads of great movies, you know, Gladiator, Alien, uh... uh this is the thing, I've seen most of his post-90s work. Uh, yeah, this is embarrassing, I'm struggling for this. But, um, Blade Runner, you know, uh, it's just, it's his seminal work. It's um, everything I love about him as a director in one package. Uh, this is, uh, it's just absolutely timeless, again, uh, despite the dated sci-fi elements. It's thought-provoking, it's, uh, it's dark, it's moody. It is uh, a great detective story, and it's just got so much to it. Um, flat out one of the best movies I've ever made. Like, uh, I know this is just my opinion, but Blade Runner, it, it, it deserves to be ranked among the best movies ever made. Uh, definitely one of the most influential movies ever made. And just, again, yeah, watch it. <laughs> That's all I can say for these. Uh, number 16 is my absolute favourite comedy of all time. Uh, no movie, no matter how many times I watch it, makes me laugh as much or as hard as this movie. And it is uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And if you've seen it, I don't even need to explain why, because you have got this movie memorised to a fault. Uh, it is, it's, yeah, it's just simply the flat out funniest movie I've seen in my life. Every single joke hits in this movie. Um, which is something Monty Python wasn't always great at, because like the Flying Circus show, there were a lot of sketches that didn't land, but every single joke in Holy Grail hits, and um, you can just barely laugh at every single one of them. Um, there was, there's just so much to this movie, so many fucking brilliant jokes. You know, uh, Lancelot storming the wedding, you've got the, the taunting Frenchman, the coconuts, the nights around the... Song in Camelot, the animated skits in between, the ending, it's just, um, it's just laugh a minute, it never lets up, it's joke after joke after joke, and every single one is funny. Um, you've got to judge a comedy, really, based on how much it makes you laugh, you know, uh, when it, when it comes down to it, you can take everything else away from a comedy, if it, if it doesn't make you laugh, it's not good as a comedy, uh, and, Again, that's how I judge this movie, judge comedies. And again, I love Blazing Saddles, some like it hot, hot fuzz, Deadpool, you know, but no movie uh, just hits me right in the funny bone like Monty Python and Holy Grail. Life of Brian is excellent as well, but for my money, uh, Holy Grail is just a much funnier movie. Um, yeah, flat out iconic, just absolutely hilarious from start to finish. Uh, Number 15, this is uh, one I watched relatively recently, uh, but it just struck a chord with me immediately, and that is Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. Um, this is one of those movies you can watch and immediately see how it influenced the entirety of cinema. Um, hell, just look at A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life is basically just Seven Samurai done for kids. Uh, it is down to a T the same, and The Magnificent Seven, you know, was a full on American remake of. Seven Samurai that spawned its own franchise. Um, it is one of the best examples of how to do an ensemble cast perfectly. Uh, every character is well realised and memorable. 
and each has their place in the story, and the story, despite it being a movie that's three and a half hours long, it's so well paced, I never felt like this dragged. Uh, the dialogue is fantastic. It's such a simple story to connect to as well. The fact that the last uh, last hour to hour and a half of it is just this climax that's been building for the entire movie, taking part in multiple stages. Uh, it's such uh, captivating stuff. It holds your attention for the entire thing. Uh, Kikuchio uh, is, again, one of the greatest characters in all of fiction. His arc throughout the movie is uh, so well realised and so well acted. You know, uh, it is. Uh, I prefer watching uh, foreign movies in their original language because um, there's a lot that can be done with delivery and uh, Kikuchio's character, a lot of what you uh, learn about him is from the way he delivers his lines. You would lose a lot of that in a translation, a straight up translation with a dub. Um, again, it's just an amazing movie, uh, widely regarded as one of the best movies ever made, and rightfully so. Uh, it's just a fantastically written story about a group of characters, and I mentioned this with uh, X-Men, I love character-driven stories, and Seven Samurai is one of the flat-out best. Uh, 14, this is the only one I have a physical copy of, uh, and it's because it's not out on physical media yet. Uh, the most recent movie on this list, um, Avengers Endgame. Uh, what can I say? It's just, it was the perfect way to cap off um, 11 years of storytelling. Um, this movie as a is just what you can use to represent the MCU as a whole, um, because it tied everything together perfectly for me. Um, and it did so in a way I wasn't expecting either. Um, I didn't know what to expect from this movie, and I love experiences like that. Like, so many movies, you can kind of know where they're going right from the start. Like, you, it's not hard to put pieces together. But Endgame had me guessing from the entire, uh, the entire time. Um, it had some of the greatest moments in its series, uh, and it was just a culmination of all the work that's been done. Um, it was such an emotionally uh, satisfying climax. You know, uh, some of the biggest action in the series, some of the best character moments in the series, so many great callbacks to uh, the rest of the series. This is a love letter to the MCU more than anything. Uh, it's kind of hard to see where they're going to go from here. Uh, because I don't think this can ever be topped. I think this is the best movie they're ever going to make in this series. Um, yeah, it is a landmark in cinema. Simply put, uh, in 20, 30 years' time, uh, this movie is still going to be as widely, widely uh, praised as it is today, I reckon. This is going to go down as one one of the best movies ever made. Flat out. I, yeah, uh, I'm sure all of you have already seen it. But it bears repeating, this was the biggest movie of all time, and it lived up to that. It really did. Uh, number 13, speaking of biggest movies of all time, of course, um, I couldn't do this list without mentioning Star Wars. Uh, I have the complete saga set uh, on Blu-ray, but my personal favourite is Episode 5 of The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, for fairly obvious reasons for anyone who's seen it. Uh, it. It was the entry that uh, it's the perfect sequel. Like I mentioned before, uh, I think a great sequel is one that takes everything that was great about the original and steps up a notch, make, makes it bigger, makes it better. And Empire Strikes Back was that in spades. Uh, it also started the trend of like the dark second movie, you know. Um, so many uh, film series have followed this trope. But Empire was the one I think that did it first, and it one that did it the best, easily. Um, it uh, was just an absolute landmark, you know. Uh, still, uh, its effects still hold up today amazingly. Um, characters and the story, like nothing. Needs to, there's nothing I can say about Star Wars that hasn't been said a million times by everybody else. Um, there's a reason these movies are so well loved, so well remembered, uh, and. Uh, I don't even need. I don't, I don't even need to explain it. Really, it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. 
That's literally all I can say about it. And episode five for me was just flat out the best of all of them. Uh, number 12, appropriately, is uh, 12 Angry Men. Um, yeah, I, I didn't actually plan this, but uh, it found was number 12. Um, like I said, a great story driven by its characters. Uh, such a simple uh, setup. Uh, you know, 12 jurors in a room just deciding on whether or not this kid is guilty of murder. And um, it's such a great experience uh, as it, as the story goes along and they start unraveling the case, how it starts as just one guy wanting to confirm his, wanting to confirm the case to just gradually, gradually piecing things together, unraveling everything. And um, what makes the movie great is all the characters, how they all play off of each other, how they all clash, how you can see uh, just from like the slightest of subtle hints how uh, everyone is reacting differently to what's going on around them. Um, it's like the, the idea of a bottle episode. Uh, this is basically that. Uh, it was. It is based on a play as well, which again makes sense for the presentation. But um, it's just a perfect movie to me. There is no, There is nothing I could pick out as wrong in this movie. The pacing, writing, characters, everything just. Uh, works together to form this brilliant whole. It's absolutely timeless. It is uh, one of the best movies of its time. Um, I cannot, again, I can't find a single thing wrong with this movie. Uh, it's just the fact that I had to order them, you know. Uh, so yeah, again, another movie that you, I think is a must watch for everyone. And finally, ending the first part of my list, uh, number 11 for me is Lost in Translation. Uh, this was actually in my top 10 for the longest time until recently, but uh, this is my uh, zen movie, if you will. This is my chill out movie. This is a movie I can watch uh, when I'm upset or stressed and it just calms me down immediately. Uh, it's That's what it is. It creates this dreamlike atmosphere of uh, Tokyo, how... Uh, the way it's directed, how it shows to Tokyo in so many different ways, how uh, a foreign environment can be seen in different ways. So it can be seen as warm and inviting from the local, from like the locals and welcoming you in, at a bustling activity and stuff. Or it can be seen as quite alienating and quite uh, culture shock. You know, like there's so many moments in there where you can see the culture shock from the characters being in this unfamiliar setting. Uh, the sequence when uh, Scarlett Johansson's character is in Kyoto was so beautifully shot and so uh, mesmerising and peaceful, you know. Um, uh, Sofia Coppola uh, more than lived up to her father's legacy with this movie. Uh, it is uh, just, again, another movie I can't find any faults with. Uh, it's got such great writing and uh, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson have such great chemistry as well. Uh, they really do uh, carry this movie together. Uh, they've come across as so natural. Uh, it's effortless uh, the way they uh, react to each other, you know, opposite each other. It's uh, just a beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm not gonna go. To, I'm, I'm gonna stop before I keep keep on gushing, really. But uh, uh, these are my my. 20 to 11 favourite movies. Um, next week I will be doing my top 10 favourite movies of all time. Uh, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this, uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, like, share and subscribe and all that. Uh, share with me uh, some of your favourite movies in the comments if you'd like. Uh, I'll leave my Twitter in the bio as well. So again, uh, next week my top 10 favourite movies of all time. Thank you for sticking this out. And uh, again, uh, I will get that to you once it's done. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.